It's new product time, Lydia. New okay. products. We're going to go through these a little fast, so we have some time for your questions. New products. Mm -hmm. Okay. New products time. Okay, first one, there's a back in stock. Back in stock. We finally got another big shipment of these awesome 5.25 volt 1 amp power adapters. Yeah. Uh, they're USB output. Um, we they got them uh, for the NETV, which is a you know a, a, a FPGA HDMI thing, and it draws a lot of power, so it wanted an amp. But it wa I, we want you know Bunny suggested these because uh, the extra 20, uh, 0.25 volts means that by the time it gets through the USB cable and, and to the device, it's 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 you know the resistance of the cable because USB cable is really thin, drops down to five volts, and uh, it's totally safe. But it gives you a little bit more power. Okay. So this is really good. Next up, these are super cute. Yeah, these are uh, these little LED can, um, matrices, and uh, we have one hooked up to our. Um, yeah, you want to go to the overhead? Yeah, go to the overhead. Overhead. So um, we have it hooked up, and they're super, super bright. So you can see it's scrolling text. This is on a, the LED backpack. It's so bright, it's kind of freaking out. Um, but drawing shapes and, and printing hello world. and That's cool. And we got it to scroll all sorts of ways. Um, so yeah, we've got the backpack. And also the the display, and it's it is expensive, more expensive than the red, green, and blue. But it's because these uh, red, uh, green, and yellow matrices. But that's because it's blue, and blue these are more expensive to make, um, and they're much rarer. They're not used as often. But it's really beautiful. So if you want a project that has bright blue LEDs, yeah, uh, you get sixty four of them. Yeah, except more, more matrices. Yeah, this is the the backpack. So you can control it with only uh, two pins. Yeah. I squared C pins, and we have an Arduino library, and we'll be working on a Raspberry Pi library as well for this. That'll be fun. Yeah, and then some quick things. We have some um, Raspberry Pi, uh, I guess not news, but we just news. have a few things. So um, uh, real quick, um, there was uh, a bunch of people in, in the UK, Great Britain, who um, it's expensive to get just a case. And so they're like, is there any place we can get them in the UK only? So we do. Um, Fen Optic is actually making cases in partnership with us in the UK. There's also two other companies that contacted us and wanted to do something different than the free design that we put out there. Mm -hmm. And so they're working with us. Everyone's actually really cool. They're like, hey, we love that design. Is there any way we can work together? So if you're in the UK, you'll be able to get the case directly from people who worked with us. And uh, we're really happy about that. Um, we released um, two new uh, mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi products this week. Uh, the first one is the uh, dish, dish. Yeah. and the dish is a way to hold up uh, the Raspberry Pi. This is a close-up, but I yeah. want I want, to sh I want you to show this um, on the main screen because uh, it's okay. yeah, it's super sturdy and, and yeah, it's, it's like it's like hi, like things are stuck here. Um, so this is the the dish, and uh, I'll show it on the overhead because it is not super easy. Yeah, we'll but that. basically, um, you know, you have a large breadboard, so you can yeah. fit a cobbler, and then I, I'm working on. Um, I will then. You can fit your um, Raspberry Pi here, and we'll show the mounting shortly. And then uh, I use the cobbler to connect up. And then while you're doing your wiring, you can remove this cable, do your wiring, and then plug this back in. Yeah. And there's a lot of space here because the cobbler just take a little bit of space. So we decided like to make it extra long. So you know, I've got this um, barometric pressure sensor I'm testing and a character LCD I'm testing, and then. Um, one of the things that's a little annoying about the Pi, um, well, there's, there's two things that are a little annoying about it when it comes to this stuff, is first up, um, there's the NTSC out, or PAL out, and audio out, and it's on the opposite side of the HDMI, and so there's no way to, to have this so you're not block. there's something on every side, so there's no way to put it on the plate without blocking it one way or the other. So we decided, well, you can't use HDMI and, and composite out at the same time. You have to boot with one or the other because it auto detects on boot which one you're using. So we just made it so you can mount it um, in the Either opposite way, yeah. way. So this way you can get to the HDMI port. And then with audio, you can still get to it, but um, the composite's a little tougher. And then with this one, you can get to the composite and audio easily, but you don't use the HDMI. And that's what I tend to use because I have one of those little TVs up on the... Uh, my uh, desk. And then the other thing I want to show is um, the Raspberry Pi does not have mounting holes. It's, it's one of the things that's a little uh, annoying about the Pi. They just, I guess they want to save space, or I'm not sure exactly why, but there's no way to attach to it. There's no through holes at all. Um, so we had to figure out a way to attach to it. And we, we thought about using uh, some acrylic cutouts, and, and uh, Philberg has designed this dish, and he came up with a, a you know, slew of ideas. And uh, in the end, um, we ended up going with these little standoffs, and they're kind of neat. They have this little gap, and they grip onto the circuit board, 
but they don't mar it. It's made out of nylon, and then you just screw into the um, from the bottom. And um, these standoffs are from which I don't know the, the part number offhand, but uh, I'll post it up maybe later. They're they're super strong and solid, and um, but they won't damage the board. And you, they can grab from the edge or um, from a corner. They can do a corner grab as well. So these are really handy, really good for if you ever have a circuit board. I mean, oftentimes you'll end up with a circuit board and there's no easy way to mount it. This uh, always, you know, there's always going to be one little place where um, you don't have a component you can grab onto the edge, unless you know you have stuff at the all the way to the edge, which is pretty rare. Uh, you'll be able to grab any circuit board and uh, attach it. It's it's super secure. Like it's not going anywhere. Arr. Move. Okay. Move, yeah. Move. Won't move. Okay. Okay. So we're just gonna keep moving. And then this week we also um, released the Raspberry Pi starter pack. And then we went out. Oops. Um. Whoa. There's Mul two. Yeah. There's multiple. Versions. Hey you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get, uh, one of you needs to get off the go. screen. Go. Okay. Um. So yeah, we want to have a starter pack, and um, this is our first um, starter pack. So it comes with a case, a power supply, um, a USB cable, an Ethernet cable, a console cable, so you can attach it to the console if you want, uh, an SD card writer, a four gig SD card uh, that you can use for burning our, our repo on. Um, a cobbler, and a large breadboard like uh, the one you saw just now, some breadboarding wires, and then a collection of parts so you can follow the first, I think, four tutorials we have on using the Raspberry Pi. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, like a good starter pack. It's a beater pack, and yeah. uh, we ran out, but we'll have some more uh, in a week yeah, or two. Yeah, sold out really fast. And then um, we wanted to spend time on this, even though boy, we ran out of time tonight. Um, the Ultimate GPS went in stock, and, and it's then more ultimate. And it ul it ultimately sold out instantly. We're gonna have more very soon. Yeah. But um, we had a bunch of resellers who picked yeah. up a lot. So check your resellers because a lot of resellers ended up kind of coming yeah. in and grabbing fifty. So there's an update to it. It got a more ultimater. Yeah. I mean, it is possible. I thought, how it how could it be more ultimate? Because we went through version one, and version one was pretty ultimate. It was really good. Um, and then version two came out and it had the built-in data logging. And that was, like, even more ultimate. And I was like, well, like, that's as ultimate it's going to get. Like, you're not going to be able to get something that's better than the built-in data logging. And then, yeah. then they're like, oh, there's this other module, the update, and it's, like, even more ultimate. First off, the module's even smaller. It's even smaller than before. And yeah. I'll show it on the other right? Yeah, because I have to show all these details. Okay. So um, for people who are, like, size, like, nervous and stuff, because they're doing, like, you know, small um, sensor stuff, the it's even smaller. It was, like, this tall before and then it's like two millimeters shorter but it's still as sensitive same sensitivity um the the board is a little bit bigger because it now has an extra pin it has a, a, a pulse per second output and it does i think um 50 millisecond pulse every second when it gets a fix so it's a precision you know it's like the atomic clock pulse per second output basically that it's getting um from the satellite it will it'll pulse it exactly like the one second transition I believe that's what the, that it means. I've never actually used it, but I mean, I've seen the pulse, but I've never used it for any precision timing stuff. Um, but I guess for some people, it's really useful to have a, a precise uh, timing output. And this module offers it, so we have a pin, so you can get the pulse per second. Uh, it still has the 5 volt friendly design, so you can use it with 5 volts or 3 volts. It has an onboard regulator. Um, it has a fixed LED, which blinks a bright red when it needs a fix, and then it blinks a sm uh, very quick pulse when um, it does have a fix. Um, there's a navel pin so you can uh, power it down uh, without having to power the whole thing. Like you just in pull the navel pin down with the microcontroller. Uh, it's got ARCs and TX um, and there's still a battery on the back that you can add if you want to have the real-time clock. So just add a coin cell and you've got a battery that lasts a long time. It's got two mounting holes so you can attach it very easily. And um, the, the awesome thing that's been added is now there's a UFL connector. And UFL is basically just a, a radio connector uh, for antennas. And it allows you to use um, a, a active antennas. This is like a, a big antenna that you could put on the outside of your car or something. And when you attach a SMA to UFL adapter, we have these in the store. They're really common. And uh, you know, a lot of radio people have them because they're, they're such a common uh, converter from these little... Um, connectors to these more common, bigger ones. Uh, these are just lighter and smaller, and that they're easier to solder onto a board than these big ones, and that's why uh, it has UFL and not SMA directly on the board. Um, but you can just plug in your UFL connector, and um, it just snaps on. And um, you can even 
move it around. It, it does it does move without coming apart. You have to snap it off. Um, and this allows you to have an active antenna. It draws an extra 20 milliamps, but you can have the antenna anywhere you want. It's also much more sensitive. And the GPS module will automatically detect that you've attached an antenna and switch over to it. So you have the built-in patch antenna, which works great, but then you also have the option for an external antenna when you want to use an external antenna for more sensitivity. So I think this is as ultimate it gets. And um, we had one of these sent up in a balloon, and it went up to 27 kilometers uh, before it lost fix. We're going to try to uh, get a firmware version from um, the MTK uh, yeah. factory, the makers of the chipset, and try to get up to 40 kilometers, and uh, we'll see if we can do that sometime in the future. Okay. That was new products. You burned through this really fast. Boom. Zoom. Done. New products. Whew. Thank you for getting through this. So fast, data. Okay.